Hello, I'm dropping in to continue with the Happy New Year Witches series read uh, where we're going into uh, what's coming in for the collective in 2022 um, and then we're breaking it down now into the different elemental categories of signs, okay? I've already covered uh, fire, earth, uh, we're in water now, okay? Uh, I don't know what's been going on, but... Well, maybe I do. I am a pretty strong Libra, okay? Libra, Libra rising, Libra stellium in the first house of Aries. And I also got my Mars in uh, Libra. So carry a lot of that energy, the, the oppositional energy. That's kind of who I am. <laughs> sort of swinging between those two extremes, the masculine, the feminine, you know? Um, and that's my... My purpose as a Libra in this life, right, is to find that balancing point. Uh, but what I was going to say is Libras and Geminis, Aquarius, the uh, air signs have been a little more subdued, you know. Um, we'll get into that when it's time for them to make an appearance. But uh, right now I'm, I'm picking up where we last left off with the water signs. Uh, Scorpio, Pisces, and Cancer. Um, we have quite a few uh, readings in this series. There's 19 of them. And uh, there is a playlist here on Broad Coven, you know, where you can watch them straight through. It's, it's like a meandering journey, okay? We've been on quite a journey. I actually brought this reading in back at Samhain uh, for the witches, for Witches New Year, okay? Um, but it works. We're carrying it over into this year because uh, I really wanted to follow through with this reading. Uh, after I get through with each of the different uh, elemental categories of signs with air coming up at the tail end, all right, um, then I'm going to do like a general like 12 card uh, spread, one card for each sign, each individual sign, what the overarching theme is for this year for 2022. So really excited to uh, bring this in. I don't know. I, I, I was waiting for the inspiration. You know, readings are like that. You can't necessarily just uh, have yourself on a schedule with a particular reading. You have to wait until uh, the download's ready to come in. And today it was ready to come in. So uh, we've already looked at what's coming in in the winter season uh, and the spring season for the water signs. And now we're going to dive into what is coming in for the Cancer Pisces Scorpio Collective in the summer of this present year of 2022. It is a six number year numerologically. And, uh, you know, that's a lot about connecting with and activating your purpose in the world, all right? So there's a lot that's going to be uh, sort of shaken out in this year, and I feel like uh, water signs are no exception to that, okay? Um, definitely uh, shifting in terms of emotionally, you know? Um, I feel like, for lack of a better term, that you all are coming into a place of emotional maturity. Uh, and what I mean by that is not that you were immature before, but that you were kind of like looking uh, at situations sort of through old filters, you know, that don't really apply anymore. Um, and you've really graduated from that and been willing to sort of, you know, go deeper, go deeper and unravel, you know, um, the perceptions you had left over from the past so you could actually look at things with, you know, fresh eyes and see them as they are now. So uh, if you want to know, you know, what's going on, I encourage you to, uh, you know, dive into Broad Coven and hit up that playlist. You know, I got them all in order for you. You can take your time with them and watch them, but uh I'm just going to dive right in with where we're at, and um, I'm also going to post this one to IG. Uh, so I want to give people a little taste of what I'm doing over here on Broad Coven. So 
those on IG, you want to see what's going on and, and what's happening with the rest of the signs and the story that's unfolded with this reading, go hit up my YouTube. Link is in the bio under my link tree, okay? So, diving into it, asking uh, Spirit to just please cleanse me uh, of any of my personal biases, any of my energy uh, coming in that could interfere with the clarity of this reading. I ask that the information come through, be clear, concise, easy to understand and assimilate and apply to one's life for those who are tuning in to this reading. And I just want to ask that the information that comes through is for the highest good. and is what is needed to be heard at this time. What is coming in for the Water Collective in the summer of this present year of 2022? Okay, we got some cards to uh, start the conversation with here and um, some landed, you know, face down, but I'm gonna wait to turn those over because I like to be surprised with all of you. Uh, what I really see on the deck uh, in the summertime is a decision. You're going to have to make a choice between two things, you know. Uh, you may think that you can just sort of like continue along with this like, I can have my cake and eat it too kind of mentality. Uh, but that's not always going to work out for you, okay. Um, it actually can start to create complications in your life. I feel like there's a need in the summertime for the water collective to really like distill your focus. Don't scatter it. Like if you want to be effective, really direct your flow. Um, and you need to bring some clarity into the mix. So I see you, you know, probably taking a little time out with this two of swords to sort of find your center. And, and really lean in without distractions. You know, notice that uh, they're wearing a blindfold here and they have their, their chest guarded. It's like they put up some boundaries, okay? It's sort of like, cut it out, you fucks. You know, I don't need any of your opinions right now. I don't need any of your energy coming at me. I need to sit by myself and get clear on what is needed for transformation to come into this situation. Now you see behind them is what looks like to me, what I'm perceiving at this time as a mirror. So I see it looks like this deflecting energy where you're wanting a little space so you can make up your mind because you're trying to choose between one of two things um, and you're not quite sure which way you should go. Um, as soon as you sort of settle on one, you know, you feel drawn the other. And they say that Libras are wishy-washy. <laughs> it's interesting. Libra is really coming in in your reading, okay? So you might be kind of dealing with the energies, the archetypal energies of Libra, you know, in the summertime, which Libra is about justice. Libra is represented by the justice card in the tarot, okay? So it's about making fair decisions. And that requires, you know, being in a very balanced place where you're not allowing your personal shit to get in the way of whatever you're dealing with. You have to be able to look at all sides and be a bit of a devil's advocate, okay? So you can really get a clear view of the situation before you make a decision. And that really requires a lot of internal investigation, all right? Because there's the need to sort of like get your ego out of the way and see things, see people as they are instead of slapping, you know, um, your perception on them. And whether that's a perception that's related to the past, I feel that this is coming in for some of the water signs, you know, uh, Scorpio is coming in really strong with that, okay? Um, whether it's your perception of the past and the way you're putting that, you know, superimposing it on your present reality and it's affecting how you're moving in the present, you know, you want to really uh, be clear. You want to be clear. So I see there's like this timeout 
just sort of putting putting things on hold, a pause for a moment to to get clear on what is the right path, okay? And uh, we do see that there's some kind of, both of these cards came out as crossing influences, okay? To this card of the Two of Swords, all right? And isn't it interesting, it's flanked by these two of wands. So this is about partnership. The question concerns a partnership. All right. And should I go forward with this? Should I choose this way or that way? Should I choose this person or that person? Uh, we don't have any cups on the table right now. Okay. So uh, at this point, this looks like it's dealing with some kind of partnership. Okay. And this very much could be related to a business partnership. Should you partner with somebody on a financial level? Should you work on a project together? Is it the right choice? You know, um, it's interesting because I just got this message that came through with this high priestess. And this is, um, this is a Pisces, okay, associated with the archetype of Pisces. Uh, so don't get tripped up, okay, when I'm bringing in the astrological signs associated with the major arcanas. Because they simply represent archetypal energy. Anybody can embody that energy. Where you're getting more into kind of a specific, like this person might have strong Pisces placement in their chart. That is in relation to uh, the court cards specifically, which help you identify the people you're dealing with in your storyline, okay? So with here, you know, this is an archetypal energy. Anybody can embody this high priestess energy. Um, but I do see that in this partnership, you know, where you're trying to make a decision, it, it's not just a superficial decision. There's something, there's something pretty deep at stake here, okay? Um, and I, what came through initially, and I think this message is more for Pisces, okay, is that you might be considering um, doing a, some kind of partnership around a project that has to do with shadow healing, okay? Integrating the shadow. You know, something that also incorporates the subconscious, making the subconscious conscious. Young is coming in, okay? So this like Jungian psychology piece is coming in. Um, and I feel like there's something that you're creating and that it has to do with the written word. This of course could be a book, um, but I feel like there is a partnership involved in that. It might be course creation uh, or some kind of a workshop where you have to, you know, design a workbook, but um, this is something that's like coming through. It's not going to be every single person's message, okay? We're reading for a vast collective here, but there's somebody out there that needs to hear this message, okay? So I let come through whatever wants to come through. I don't censor it. But I feel like many of you, uh, whatever this project revolves around, it revolves around some kind of healing work, okay? And I feel like there's that element there. There's this element of uh, working with the subconscious, maybe uh, working intuitively. Uh, some of you may be considering partnering, partnering with somebody on, you know, uh, some type of metaphysical, you know, pursuit. Uh, opening up a metaphysical store, you know, um, starting, uh, starting tarot readings where you go to tarot, uh, you go do tarot at events, you know, and, and you have a few people on board with that. I'm just giving you some ideas of what this could be. It could be many different things, but I feel that there's an element to this project that either involves the occult, the metaphysical, uh, or you're working on a psychological level, you know, uh, for healing. And, and it's not superficial. It goes very deep, okay? Um, but I think that the, the, the question isn't so much about the project itself. I feel it's more about, you know, who you partner with on that. Who, who are the right people to bring in on this project um, that will really... Uh, create, you know, a beneficial outcome for what you're hoping to create, the activation of your vision, right? Okay, so I see there's some kind of decision around this. You really want to make sure that you make the right choice. Um, and there could be, you know, like contracts to sign, uh, some legalities involved in this. And you really want to make sure that you're solid, 
you know, on what you're investing in and what you're getting into rather than just sort of listening to all the noise from the peanut gallery and what they're telling you to do, okay? Uh, let's just look a little bit more at that. Yeah, the basis of the matter here, uh, Four of Swords, okay? So uh, that really is sort of like turning it over to spirit, uh, taking a time out. You know, you're, there's definitely going to be a pause for you coming in in the summertime to really feel out if this is the right direction for you. And I see that you're going to be a little confused. And I do believe it's a choice between one of two things. I either do this or that. I either partner with this person or that person. Okay? Again, I do not see any cups on the board here. So at this time, it's not looking like a romantic storyline to me, okay? It's looking like you're making a decision about some kind of endeavor, some kind of partnership on a business level, um, and you want to make sure you make the right choice, okay? But this is about you getting clear, because there's... There's something that's unclear. There's something that doesn't feel right. And I believe that what's going to come in is that intuitively something's going to seem off to you. All right. With that high priestess energy. So I encourage you take time to get quiet. Don't go and turn to, you know, your social circle and ask everybody else what their opinions are about what you should fucking do. Okay. Tune into yourself. Get really quiet and listen. And you'll, you'll be directed, okay? You'll be directed. And you may sort of feel like you're bound. Like this is just coming in like you feel like you're bound to some contractual uh, obligation. Like, oh, I've already kind of like committed myself here, but I really feel drawn in this direction. There's a conflict of interest there. And you're trying to decide what you need to do. You're, you're never bound, okay, with the Eight of Swords energy. All you need to do is take off the blindfold, See things as they are, not as you wish them to be. If something's feeling off, it's fucking off, okay? It's off. Your job is to create the space to tune in and feel out what is it, you know, that's feeling off to me. And I encourage you to make that a solitary pursuit and not bring too many people into your business. Because if you do, you're going to create complication for yourself. And it's that complication. You know, I'm seeing these eight of swords as eight tongues wagon. All right. It's like eight people wagon their fucking tongues, you know, flapping their lips and giving their opinion about what the best choice for you is. And I think that if you allow that to come in, it's just going to create a lot of complication for you. So don't fucking go there. Yeah, I think that there's going to be something that changes for you very fast. And that's what's throwing you into this confusion with this Knight of Swords energy. Okay. Uh, Knight of Swords, you're looking at the air signs, okay? So there's air making the appearance. We're going to come in and take up the tail end of this reading series, all right? Libra, Aquarius, Gemini, all right? Maybe associated with one of those signs. Doesn't have to be their sun sign. They can just have it strongly aspected in their charts. Or this is somebody who really embodies that energy. This is somebody who's moving very fast, okay? This is somebody who's moving very fast. This is a situation that's coming in very fast. It's sort of one of those uh, opportunities where it's like strike while the iron's hot or you're going to fucking lose it. It's not around for long. It's something that's breezing on through. So it's going to be up to you to make a quick decision in this matter because you're going to be demand, you know, dealing with demanding circumstances where you don't have the leisure uh, to just, you know, just go, you know, uh, take your time with making this choice, okay? There is this sort of element of urgency there. Um, and what I'm getting here, too, is if anybody makes you feel pressured, like it's not okay for you to just take a moment to kind of like really sit with things, maybe go over those contractual agreements with a fine-tooth comb, really, you know, settle in and, and see what's really on the table. Okay, if anybody makes you feel like that, then I strongly suggest that you question their intentions. Okay, that's coming through really clearly. Um, you know, 
be aware of how high pressure can be used to create confusion as well. All right. And we are looking at confusion with that eight of swords energy. Yeah. If you just take the space. Okay. If you just take the space to get clear on how you feel in this situation and what feels right to you, you're going to have that big dick energy. Okay. With this ace of wands, that is the power to act and it's the power to act with authority and really root a new beginning in your life. Okay. It's your mojo. Like your mojo will come forward. You'll know what's right for you, but see it's singular, right? Notice this with this Ace of Wands. By the way, Ace of Wands uh, is also a timing card. Wands are associated with the fall season. So what begins in the summer, you'll probably really see it, you know, take off in the fall. All right. But notice how it begins first with Ace of Wands before you get to the partnership. Okay. So this is about you really coming into the center of your power, your vision, what you want to create. You need to be very clear on that first. And once you're very clear on that, then you can be, you know, solid in what you're bringing to the table in terms of a partnership. Okay. I feel like this is needed on your part. Like before you can even really invest in a partnership on this level, you need to be very clear in yourself what you're doing, why you're doing it, you know, and it needs to be aligned. It needs to be aligned with your highest vision. Okay. And I feel like you need a little space. I feel like you're going to need a little space because there's been all these people like talking at you. All right. So make that space. So when you do make a move, it's fucking solid. It's strong. You're sure of it. And it's a, it's a move that guarantees success, okay? With that Ace of Wands, that's acting with authority, all right? It's like holding court in your light. In your life. Ooh, I said holding court in your light. Holding court in your light. I think you're dealing with somebody in this matter that's not on the up and up. And isn't that interesting? When I first began the reading, I mentioned shadow element involved okay so maybe you think you know who you're dealing with and maybe you think that there's somebody that are that you can trust right that they have your best interests at heart but maybe they don't all right act from your light act from your light let your light be what illuminates the situation okay uh and trust your light trust your intuition, okay? Trust what comes to you from spirit, you know? Let that inform your moves, you know? When you feel it in your soul, when it's humming in your bones, like that's for you, okay? And and be aware, you know, be aware of hitchhikers, okay? This just came in too. Be aware of hitchhikers, you know? People who see that, you know, you're moving into expansion and, and you're starting to like make things happen for you and then they just sort of like, want to glom on, you know, to where you're going. But it's like, where the fuck were you? Where the fuck were you when I was, you know, in the trenches of this shit? Now that I got momentum, you want to, you know, you want to hop along for the ride? Be aware. Be aware. There's some shadow element involved in this situation. Yeah, I see, you know, you refusing this offer actually with this four of cups you know i think they're making it look real good you know they're making it look real tempting but you're you you've been there done that you know you know how these situations can work out you've seen it in the past and you're informed by those choices. And look, isn't I love this. This is what I love about the tarot, okay? Look at how those arms are crossed. Do you see this? With that two of swords that opened up the reading. Now, you're going to have boundaries with this. I see you laying down boundaries. I see that during this time that you take to yourself to get very clear, you're going to know exactly 
uh, which direction you should go. And I feel like you're going to be turning down an opportunity because you don't fucking need them to make it happen. You got the ace of wands. You're going to make that shit happen for your damn self. Yeah. And uh, this is the... Uh, this is the author card, you know, the title card in, in the deck. And I keep it. And for me, I've given it the meaning of, you know, first of all, any kind of contractual agreements, okay? Uh, I feel like it's not going to be good enough. It's not going to be good enough. And I think you've really started to understand your value and what you deserve. And you're not willing to kind of settle for less anymore. So I see you turning that offer down because it's not that good enough. And you're going to like write your own contract. You know, you're going to live life on your terms. You're going to build your dreams uh, based on what works for you. You know, I think you're going to find uh, that this is not the right direction for you to go to partner with a specific person. Yeah. Uh, and you're going to bring that to completion. But the thing that's so awesome with this world card is not only do you bring it to completion and say, mm, you know, no, thank you. It's a big completion of a cycle for you that goes all the way back, you know, to years and years and years ago. Some of you, you know, since you were kids where you sort of like uh, never felt like you were enough on your own or or like Nothing you did was, was, you know, ever, ever good enough on its own. And so you needed to kind of like rely on other people to, to boost you up, you know, or, or where you were willing to compromise yourself in your life because, you know, you, you struggled with feelings of, of self-worth, you know, uh, these are just some themes of the way this could come about. But I feel like there's been many times in your life in the past when you played small, you played small and it's not because you don't have something amazing to offer because you do. You played small because it made other people feel comfortable and you didn't want to deal with the fallout. And I feel like now you don't give a fuck about the fallout. You need to move where your spirit is directing you. You need to do what is going to fulfill you. You need to stand up for yourself and stand on your value, know your worth, and not settle for less. It, like your life fucking dependent on it, for real, because you have really come full circle with a lesson, and now it's time to really uh, celebrate the victory of achieving, you know, the wisdom that came from your life experiences and really stand on it. And I see that if you do that, you know, and you choose yourself and you choose your highest vision, it's going to be extremely successful for you. Um, but I almost see you going your own way. Yeah. <laughs> and then we got Empress energy right here. Okay. Empress energy is associated with uh, the signs of Libra and Taurus. Okay. So uh, you're fully going to step into this Empress energy, archetypal energy, remember, okay? You could be dealing with somebody that is one of those signs, all right, or has one of those signs strongly aspected in their chart, um, but I really see this as you uh, investing in yourself, choosing yourself, and this is going to lead to a period of abundance and true satisfaction in your life. And I think you're going to really flourish, you know. The Empress has her shit together, all right. She has everything she needs to boogie. And she built it for herself, okay. She, she's complete of herself. She doesn't need any, anybody else to, you know, help her get where she needs to go. She's, she's mastered it on her own path within herself. You know, the Empress is the embodiment of all four queenly energies, the Queen of Swords, okay, the ability to stand in the truth, the ability to act with, you know, decisiveness, the ability to speak the truth, to cut off what doesn't serve, the Queen of Wands, which is all about, you know, owning your fire, bringing your fire forward in the world feeling yourself, feeling your mojo, 
okay? Not being ashamed of your sensuality, not being ashamed of what you're working with, but really let it be, you know, the inspiration that it is for you, okay? The Queen of Cups, emotionally available, ready to receive, you know? Uh, ready to give one's creative offerings to the world. All right. And that Queen of Pentacles, which is about rooting it in material reality. <laughs> and it brings the Ace of Cups, a brand new beginning. And this is also associated with the summer season. So I see you starting a new creative project that really fulfills your soul, lights you on fire. It's something you're going to do for yourself. You don't need anybody else to kind of carry the weight for you or, uh, you know, give you a leg up. It's going to come from your inspiration. And I see it coming to a successful uh, culmination point in the fall. And I will be back next time with that fall season for the water side.